I needed a moment in my life where I felt like I was pushing myself. Hello, and welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Whether you're writing the first sentence of a story or solving the climate crisis, you need to think in new ways. On the show, I interview peak performers who are coming up with those creative solutions. Through creativity, action, inspiration, and innovation, they're changing the world. I also bring you ideas and techniques that you can use to unlock your potential to do the same. And now, let's get to the show. Hello, and welcome to the Creative Solutions Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. Thank you so much for being here. Today, I want to talk to you about something that I've been doing a lot of thinking about, and that is wacky ideas. Now, what do I mean by wacky ideas? They're uh, something that you haven't thought of before or that you would normally look at and go, what? No, no way. And you would walk away from it. You would turn away from it. You would think it was just too out of left field for you to pay any attention to and you would go do something else, right? So those are the wacky ideas, the bizarre ideas, the bizarre notions that you might have. And as I'm thinking about this and as I'm sort of noodling this around in my own brain, I start thinking about what does it do to you when you discount wacky ideas out of hand? And then what does it do to you? What does it do to your brain and your mind when you don't discount wacky ideas out of hand? Like what happens to you almost physically or nerve wise when you look at a wacky idea and instead of going, oh, there's no, I'm, I cannot possibly take the time off right now and go to the beach with my friend for the whole week. That's a wacky idea. It's a little bizarre because I have so much work to do. I'm on deadline. Da, 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 da. What if instead you went, wait a minute, is there a way for me to do this? So you don't discount the idea out of hand you let it percolate. You go, okay, so maybe today isn't the day that I'm going to (laughs) go drop everything and go down to the ocean with a friend of mine, but maybe next week or maybe the week after that. But I'm going to, instead of going no way, start thinking about, okay, what could I do? How could I get this? And what's more important is what might I be missing in my day, in my life, if this kind of wacky idea is bubbling up out of my subconscious, right? So what I want to think about right now is if those wacky ideas or the bizarre ideas tap you on the noggin out of the blue or they whisper in your ear in that moment between sleeping and waking, what do you do with them? If something is happening that goes, oh, you know what I'd really love to do? I'd really love to chuck it all and go sit in a hut somewhere and drink a pina colada and watch the sunrise. Okay, what what is that telling you, right? Maybe you're burnt out. Maybe you need a vacation. Maybe you need a pina colada. (laughs) But there's something going on. If there's something happening in your sort of imagination, in your fantasy life, if you will, if there's something going on where these ideas are popping up, What is that trying to tell you? Now, for me, for example, back when I first started my coaching practice, I was talking to my my coaching clients a lot about uh, earth, air, fire, and water, the ancient alchemical elements. And why was I doing that? Well, in in olden times, uh, everyone, the, the sort of wise people thought that everything was made out of these four elements, the earth being the tangible, uh, the fire, the, the water, the seas and the oceans and, and even our blood, and also uh, the air, which is, of course, the everything you see in the sky and the air you breathe and all of that. And so they really believed that everything was made up out of these four elements. Now, of course, we know that there's way more elements than that and minerals and things like that. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this ancient belief that these elements comprise everything. So I ended up thinking about that so much that I wrote a book on this thought 
called Life Elements. And why is that important? It's important because I'm not just talking out of my hat here about earth, air, fire, and water. The ancient system of Ayurveda looks at those elements also, right, as as a way of categorizing different kinds of people. Chinese medicine, Tai Chi, Qigong, uh, acupuncture also looks at elements. Now, their elements are slightly different, but it's still looking at that sort of what is the breakdown of those elements that are the foundation of everything we have ever known and everything we've ever seen. And so I went, okay, let me think about it. And it was bizarre to think, well, what could I do about this? These are ancient 5,000 year old systems. Why am I trying to sort of put my stamp on it? And I went, you know what? What if I didn't? What if I didn't just go, oh, well, other, you know, wiser people than I am have done this before. What am I talking about? But here's the thing. One of the things that I realized when I was talking to my coaching clients was that a lot of these systems that I mentioned just now uh, talk to you about the elements. But what they say is what you are is what you are and never shall it change. And I went, well, wait a minute. I think that people grow and change and I think we can change. And so in this life element system that I developed in, in the book, I went, okay, what if you are someone who is very much an overthinker, you overthink everything and you, you cannot make decisions because you're think, think, think. Well, you might be very high in air. That's the that's the descriptor for the air element. Okay. So what you might is need is a little bit more fire, which is that take action, decisive, let's get it done and and actually doing it. So is there a way to build up that fire element in a person who's very much an overthinker? The same thing can be said for what if you are very, very much, let's say, a homebody, right? You are just sedentary. You don't get up. You don't do things that you even want to do, but you're just so set in your ways that that's it. Well, you also might need some fire, some of that take charge, go get it done kind of energy. And is there a way to build up some of that fire energy? Well, I came up with these missions and meditations to enable you to do just that. The same thing can be said for uh, what if you are someone who uh, is emotionally very, you're very quick, right? Your emotions go from zero to 60 in no time at all. You might need a little bit of earth energy, right? You might need to sort of chill out and get a little bit more stable, a little bit more secure and a little bit more what they call grounded. Now, grounded does sound like calm and stable and everything is okay. So you might need to build up some of that earth energy. And so I went, okay, you know what? I'm going to write this book and I'm going to talk about all the things that you need to do in order to be well-rounded. And that's what the book Life Elements is all about. But when I first started thinking about all of this, I was very heavily into uh, acupuncture and acupressure and really looking at uh, the elements and how how uh, this this modality of ancient ancient medicine looks at the elements, and I, as I said, I kept I kept going. Well, there are there I, I have my own spin on this, and I I went well. That's bizarre that I want to put my own spin on it because there's five thousand years of, <laughs> of data on this. Who who am I? Who do I think I am to do this? And then I went. You know what? I'm gonna try. So what if I did? What if I wrote a book? And I ended up writing a book. And in the book there, I developed a 100 question uh, assessment that sort of lets you as you as you answer those questions, it lets you really figure out which one of those elements you are. Are you more a thinker? Are you more an, an emotional person? Are you more quick to act? Are you more stable and centered? And then do you have imbalances in this? Instead of being just someone who is meticulous and very much logical and reasoned, you are, you have to look at things in every from every direction and so much that you have trouble making a decision and taking any sort of action. So the first one being meticulous, being logical, being well reasoned, being step by step and very intelligent about it, that's air element. But as soon as you go into this other place of I can never make a decision, well there's an imbalance there. And so what if you were to do some of these missions and meditations to correct for that imbalance? And there are ways to do that so that you eventually end up 
completely well-rounded so that when you need to think things through, you can, so that when you need to feel things and know your emotions and be able to name them and feel them and really work through them, that's water. What if you need to act when the time is right? That's fire. And then what if you need to be able to get back to that grounded place? Well, that's earth, right? And, And in the moment when I was writing the book, And it took a long time because I spent a lot of time doing research and a lot of time working with my clients to see how some of these ideas worked and what I needed to modify. I, if I had never done that, I would have sort of sat there and gone, well, I have these ideas and these thoughts, but they're just bizarre. And who am I to presume to, to talk about this in any way that is substantive and functional? And if I had done that, if I had capitulated to those thoughts, instead of going, what if I did? What if I wrote a book? Then the book would never exist. And this entire system of concretely and uh, absolutely being able to work on yourself in this way wouldn't exist, right? This is a substantive method that I developed that has worked for many, many people. And they, I still get emails from people, even though the book came out in 2008, I still, people still contact me and say, you know, I use the book, I develop, I developed my own system for this and I love it. And I feel like when I need to act, I act, when I need to chill, I chill, when I need to think sing, things through, I can do that. When I need to know my emotions and get in touch with them, I can do that too. I'm so glad that I sort of use the system that Life Elements described in order to do that. It sounds, I just realized it sounds like a big commercial for Life Elements. It's not though. What it is, is going, okay, I didn't discount the idea. I didn't go, well, this idea is too wacky and bizarre. There's no way I can do it. Instead, I went, huh, what if I did? What if I wrote this book? What if I took this on? And that's sort of what I want to say to you. When you get a wacky idea, when you get a really bizarre idea, follow it. Don't discount it out of hand, right? That's so important because frankly, when you get that wacky or bizarre idea, it's really your subconscious kind of sending up a tendril going, this is something for you to pay attention to. There is information here for you. Pay attention. And frankly, Every time I've ever gotten a wacky and bizarre idea and I've paid attention, it's led me somewhere wonderful. So I'm here to tell you, I'm not saying if the idea is to go jump off a bridge that you go jump off a bridge, but hey, maybe what you can do is go skydiving or bungee jumping or realize that maybe your life has gotten a little too safe for you. And are there some regulated risks, you know, taking taking account for the fact that you don't want to put yourself in danger, but maybe you want to shake things up a little bit. If you're getting ideas like like I did for my 43rd birthday, you know what? I'm going to go skydiving. And my poor husband, who's got a fear of heights, went, OK, I guess we're going skydiving. But I really wanted to shake things up and I really wanted to feel on the edge. And I didn't do it by myself. I had someone in tandem behind me who is the person who pulled the chute and all of that. But I did it. I went skydiving and the same thing for scuba diving. I was I needed a moment in my life where I felt like I was pushing myself. And that's how I push myself. I go, I'm going to go skydiving. I'm going to go scuba diving. I'm going to learn how to do X, whatever X is. I'm going to learn how to ride motorcycles. These are all things I've done as part of wanting to shake things up, as part of wanting to keep my life being an exploration. Now, that's me. You might have a completely different way of doing things, but if the wacky idea takes you, I say follow it. And remember, sometimes you claim the prize, sometimes you learn the lesson. Either way, you win in the end, right? That's another way of looking at this. Even if things, if you try the idea and it doesn't work well, you learn something, you have more information now. But I'm willing to bet that if this happens, that there is some information for you to glean from the wacky, bizarre idea. And you know me, I'm always about building awareness and then doing the assessment on what it all means. So that's part of this. And maybe in a future episode, I'll detail some of that for you. But really, this is about the psychology of not discounting the subconscious's notions, the tendrils that your subconscious sends up are something that you you are well, uh, I don't even know how to say it. It's a good thing to pay attention to it. That's probably, the, <laughs> you will be well paid, well placed if you are 
going to pay attention to it, right? Why? Because it expands your implementation of your ideas. By not discounting these ideas out of hand, it gives you a much bigger palette in which to see your life. It lets you see possibilities. It also sharpens your senses. There's a lot of stuff that you can do when you get these wacky ideas, right? You will be well served. That's what I was trying to say. You'll be well served to not discount these ideas. Now, here's another way of looking at this. What if first thing in the morning, right when you sort of, right before you even open your eyes, take about 10 seconds and just listen. Just listen to what your thoughts are telling you in that between sleeping and being awake moment. Just take 10 seconds and see is there something that's popping up out of your subconscious? And I get that you might feel silly. I completely understand. You're like, okay, I'm just waking up. I'm barely awake. My eyes are still closed. Do you want me to think about? No, I'm just, you know, I want to yawn. I want to stretch. That's okay. Do all of that if you want. And it's also okay to feel silly. Silly is good. Silly is play. And if you do feel silly, ask yourself, when was the last time you relished in feeling silly? When was the last time you let yourself giggle, play, jump for joy, whatever it is, do cartwheels on the grass? Honestly, I'm betting it was probably a while ago. As adults, as grownups, we don't get to be silly very often. Most of the time, we're, we've got our heads down and we're doing what we need to do in order to get by. So I'm here to tell you, push through the feeling of silly, if that's what it is, unless you're able to just go, ha, silly is awesome. I'm going to go play. Push through the feeling, right? If you can go, I'm going to go play with this. Awesome. But (laughs) if you're, if you're going, oh, this is ridiculous. Push past the ridiculous feeling. Push past the, oh, I, I feel stupid. Nothing is stupid here. This is your subconscious getting a chance to have it say, And in a a position where you're actually listening, right? When you're actually just between sleeping and waking and you go, what do you need me to know? And something comes up and it might just be, you need to go to the bathroom. That could be the thing that your subconscious comes up with for sure. But it could also give you something really important, something that you actually have been ignoring that you wanted to do or that you need to pay attention to that you have not given the credence it deserves. So, That's one. The other thing is I want to invite you to start seeing what happens when you play with the words, what if, right? What if I, whatever it is, what if blah, 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 start asking yourself that question, right? What if, and as I say that to you right now, what, what comes up in your brain? What if, I gave a couple of seconds of silence there because I wanted you to really see, did anything come up for you? And if it did, I would love, you know, PM me, let me know. And that would be really cool because I think probably something did and hopefully you didn't discount it. But what if? And here are some possible answers to the what if question. Okay. What if I played hooky from work? That's one. Sure. What if I took out my old sketchbook? What if I had my favorite childhood cereal for dinner? What if I wrote a poem today? What if I sang in the shower at the top of my lungs? And here's the thing. Whatever your what if, if it's not, I'm going to sell everything and and run off to Fiji, which if it is and you decide to do it, also PM me, I'd love to hear about it. But if it's something that comes up that's a small thing that is easily digestible, if you will, go do it. See if you can do the thing that the what if brings up for you, right? That's such an important aspect of all of this. So much of what we do as adults is what we're supposed to do. And so little of it is the stuff that we dream of doing. But what if we let some of those ideas bubble up, didn't discount them and instead embrace them? And it can be something super simple, Like, what if I had my favorite childhood cereal for dinner? For me, it would probably be Cap'n Crunch or Frosted Flakes, high sugar content cereal. But what if I did? What if I got out the Cap'n Crunch and some oat milk and some strawberries and had myself a fabulous dinner of cereal? What if I did? And if I do that, if I decide Cap'n Crunch and oat milk for dinner, I'm going to 
really try to enjoy the heck out of it as I do it. That's the other piece of this. Release all guilt for the cereal for dinner or finding your old sketchbook or writing a poem and taking the time to do it, right? Nothing is so urgent that you can't take two minutes out to jot down a haiku or sketch out a sketch or sing a song while you're cooking dinner, right? You can be doing a lot of these things while you also implement the idea, the what if idea. And I'm, I know, I'm, I get it, you're probably really busy, but what if you eked out two minutes to do this? What if you took the 10 seconds before you open your eyes to really think about this? And I would love to hear what your ideas are. So if you do try this little exercise or either of these little exercises, drop me a line and let me know. I would love, love, love to hear from you about it. Because I think the more we ask ourselves these questions, the more we're going to open ourselves up to that creative genius inside us. And you know how I feel about creativity. I think creativity and creative solutions are what's going to save us right? We need to think creatively about all the big problems we have, all the huge challenges we're facing, because what we're doing right now, it either isn't working or it's not working fast enough. So we're going to need to roll up our sleeves and really get creative with how we do some of these things, how we implement some of these radically ingenious solutions. And if you're one of the people who's going to do it for us and with us, I salute you. So yay. <laughs> I hope I hope I get to hear some of these ideas. Try this. Try these two exercises and let me know what you think. I would love, love, love to hear about it. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I'm Isolde Trachtenberg for the Creative Solutions Podcast, and I'm going to tell you that the podcast is brought to you by a new uh, sponsor, if you will. Uh, as always, Brain FM, which is my favorite app that I use every single day to meditate, to open up my creativity, to focus, to I just did the 1099 forms for the contractors I hire, and I use that to stay focused and be able to do it without mistakes. Yay, which is a huge thing for me because that's one of my challenges in life. Uh, it's also brought to you by my book, Life Elements. Absolutely. T today, Life Elements is in the house, if you will. And I'm going to put the cover of the book uh, drawn, the cover not drawn, but created by my wonderful friend, Alex Bradley, who is amazing. He's a cartoonist and uh, does animator in Hollywood. He's incredible. And he very graciously did the cover for Life, Life Elements many, many years ago. And I'm going to put a link to his page. He does a wonderful comic called Miskatonic You, and uh, it's really cool. I'm going to put a link to his page on that in the show notes. And and last but not least, it is this episode is brought to you by Podbean, which is my podcasting host. And I've got some really fun deals for you. If you decide you want to try podcasting, drop me a line and I'll let you know. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Creative Solutions Podcast, reminding you to be bold, be creative, and most of all, be kind. <music>Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Please subscribe to the podcast if you're new, and it would mean the world to me if you told a friend about it. Today's episode was produced by Isolde Trachtenberg and is copyright 2023. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, keep living what you believe in.